In this video, we're going to be looking at three-dimensional shape, the cylinder. And cylinders are a common 3D shape with a circular cross-section. And you see them everywhere. If you've got a, a can of food, uh, that's largely a cylinder. Or cans of drink, um, a Pringles um, packet, um, a tube, and things like... Um, columns, you often see columns in buildings, and even the bars and things in gyms, where wherever you look, you can see um, a cylindrical type of structure. So we're going to be looking at, because uh, it's a fairly common, fairly important type of shape, we're going to be looking at two of its um, features. Um, one is volume, and the other is surface area. So we're going to start off by looking at the volume of a cylinder. And if you looked at the video about uh, the volume of a um, uh, prism, it's along um, very similar principles. Um, if you remember, there was a prism, and the edge is triangular, and then there's a length to it, and it looks something like that. Um, and if this is a 3D solid structure. And what we did with working out the volume, the space inside uh, a prism, was that we worked out what the area was of one of the edges, and then we multiplied that by the length of it. So it was the area of this, and multiplied by the length, and they, that gave us the, the volume. So it's a, it's a very similar type of calculation. So with the cylinder you have a circular end, or two ends rather, which an end over here. And I don't know whether you can see, it might be a bit small, but this is R, and this uh, represents the radius. And the radius is from the central point to the periphery, to the circumference. And it uses this value that we spoke of in the previous video, which was pi. And so the volume of this cylinder is the area, and the area is represented as two as pi r squared. And the length of it is h here. And so if you multiply the area by the light, uh, the length of the, the height you should have pi r squared h. Now you see th there's no sort of like multiplication signs. In fact, um, if we were to write this out in full, it'd be pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by h. But in writing formulae, the x sign for multiplication can get confused with um, a certain value, um, which is x. And so we don't use those. Instead, we don't use anything, in fact. Uh, sometimes there's a little dot representing multiplication. But if you have things like this, this formula here, uh, you know that it's pi times r squared times h. OK, let's, let's do a calculation. And let's calculate the volume of this cylinder here. And again, I'm not quite sure if you can see this clearly, but um, the diameter is 7 centimetres. And the height or whatever here is 16 centimetres. Now, we need, in order to work out the volume of this, we need to know what the radius is. But they've given us this measure here, which is from one side of the circumference to the other. And you should remember this as the diameter. So they've given us the diameter. And I mentioned this before, that what examiners tend to do is they tend to not to say, oh, the radius is this. They, they give you something else almost to throw you off the scent. Uh, so you've got to keep your wits about you. And you've got to think, well, I'm not going to just use 7 in this formula because uh, 7 refers to the diameter, not the, the radius. 
So when you're calculating this, let's say keep your wits about you, look at the values that they've given. So that is the length of the height or, or whatever we want to call it. Uh, this is the end, the diameter of seven. And so the radius is half the diameter. So uh, that's easy. So half of seven is three and a half, 3.5 centimeters. Let's put all those values. We've got all the values we need now. Let's put them in. So pi, um, and, and this is something that I always mention, uh, always when you're answering a question, always writing the formula. It, it just helps you focus on um, keeping the right track. So uh, pi multiplied, and I've just written multiplication here just to make it perfectly clear. 3.5, which is the radius squared, multiplied by 16. So now let's substitute uh, the value 3.14. So pi is 3.14 multiplied by 3.5 squared is 12.25 times 7, 16. And when you do this calculation, you multiply 3.14 by 12.25 first. And whatever you get there, you then multiply by 16. And you get this value of 615.4 so what are the units well they've given us this is in centimeters here because it could be meters if it's a large structure so it needs to be centimeters there um, and I've left out the units from this because it makes it very cumbersome but that's in centimeters and the 3.5 is in centimeters but because it's squared it means centimetres times centimetres. So in fact, this value here, the unit of uh, 12.25 centimetres squared. So if you remember from the indices, that is a one, uh, so two. When you're multiplying indices, you add them together. So, so two and one is three, and that gives you the three. So, uh, and all volumes anyway um, um, are, cubed or to the third okay so let's look at the other feature of it which is the surface area so surface area is very important so um, the cylinder as we know has two circular ends and it also has a curved surface you can think of the the area um, of this part of being like a tube um, sometimes um, these cylinders are solid structures so it's also a tube but you can think about the surface as, as being a tube when you think about the surface being a tube you can then think you know what um, I have a can of something and it has a label which is goes all the way around it and if I were to cut off the label very carefully I would obtain um, the piece of paper as a rectangle. And so, so that's the principle that we use when working out the surface area of a cylinder. So here we have this structure here. And imagine if we're going to cut it along its length and then peel off um, the, um, uh, the curved surface over here and lay it out flat. And this is what we get over here. So these are the two uh, circular ends. So that's that one, that's that one. Then this, the curved surface, when we lay it, when we lay it out, we can see that it's like a rectangle. And it's got the dimension H and the length of this we know what it is, it's 2 pi r. Okay, so, so now, now we're in business. If we know uh, the values for these, then we can work out what the whole surface area is. So back to the text over here. So um, r is the radius. Again, this is r and this is h. The area of the n circles. So the area of this is pi r squared. 
and the area of this is pi r squared. And because we've got two of them, that plus that is 2 pi r squared. And so the area is 2 pi r squared. The area of the tube, we know that um, if this was just a rectangle, ordinary rectangle, then it'd be uh, one length multiplied by the other. And that's what we have here. We have 2 pi r. Um, and you multiply the h and so that's where this bit comes from. So if we want to find out this, the total surface area of the ends and the um, circular bit there, which is now laid out flat, then this is the total surface area. This is the equation. Uh, it looks um, looks a little bit daunting. Um, it looks like some sort of Russian text or something like that. But this is to do with the ends. This is to do with the, um, the tube in the middle. Okay, so if you're ready, let's, let's work through an equation. And I hope this doesn't look too complicated to you. Um, I just like writing out the answer to things um, in very small steps uh, because uh, it sort of like stops me making mistakes and it shows the examiner um, Oh, you're working out. Okay. So, calculate the surface area of this cylinder. It's got a radius of 3 centimetres. And it's got a length or a height of 10 centimetres. And then we write out um, the area of each circular end is so if we just look at the area of this this is pi r squared and r in this case is three centimeters so pi times three squared and then the area of the curved surface is the one that we just looked at above two pi r h and so let's substitute some of the numbers two times pi times 3 which is the radius times 10 which is the the length or the height so the total area is just adding this to this but remember this is only one end we need both ends so uh, this is one end pi r, pi uh, times 3 to uh, squared plus pi times 3 squared because that's the other end uh, plus the area of the of the curved surface 2 pi times 3 with the radius times 10 so once you start working that out so pi uh, we, we now substitute um, 3.14 for pi because that's its value so 3.14 times 9, whoops, just ignore that line, is this value here. When you multiply 9 and that, that gives you 28.3. We need two lots of that because there are two ends. So that end and the other end down at the bottom. So you just repeat that. Don't even have to do the equation again, the calculation. You can just repeat that value. Now it's 2 times... 3.14, so 2 times pi, times 3, times 10. And when you add together the two 28.3s, you get 56.6. If we do this calculation here, you get 188.4. And then it's a simple case of adding them together. And you should get a value of 245. So let me just try... Um, Try altering this and do, doing this on your own. Um, for instance, you could use uh, four centimeters for the radius and nine centimeters. So what I'm doing here is that I'm adding one to, to this value and taking away one from, from this value. Um, do you think you get the same number as this? Does the volume stay the same? 
when you when you do that give it a go and see and see if it does you can write something in the comments and good luck with with trying to work through